When we hear about someone dying in a car crash, it's easy to assume he or she died from the injuries. But in the morgue, many autopsies of car crash victims have a multi-layered mystery to be solved. And a lot of people think, well, why bother? Why bother doing them? For example, many auto fatalities are actually the result of natural causes. Why did his heart stop? We don't know yet. Did he have a natural disease? Did he have a stroke? Did he have a heart attack? Uh, all of these things we can help answer. A medical examiner must also look for other influences on the driver's body. We always draw toxicology. Ooh, nice big bladder. He's been drinking at the party. You know, at least 40% of people who die in traffic accidents have alcohol in their system. The other 60% include a few surprises. I had a fellow that, a poor thing, a, a bee flew in his cab of his truck and he ended up in an accident. I like the stories, putting, piece, putting the pieces together, making a difference. In the process, Dr. G comes face to face with the reality of what a car accident can do to a person's body. The most common fatal wounds. Just blunt trauma to the head, all sorts of type of head injuries. Followed by multiple internal trauma. When a, an aorta is totally cut in half, when your diaphragms are totally ripped in half and all your abdominal organs are in your chest. Looks like a bad horror picture. Oh, that's an understatement. An accident victim's death speaks volumes to Dr. G. Their injuries can also tell her how to avoid ending up in the morgue herself. I mean, I've learned a lot. These are, you know, Dr. G's pearls of wisdom that I've learned in the morgue. And I just use them for my own, <laughs> how I live my life. I guess I'll share them with you. Dr. G's first pearl of wisdom? I don't speed. I see, you know, a lot of the accidents are caused by excessive speed, where the, your chance of dying goes up every 10 miles faster you go, exponentially. Dr. G also has a unique take on the improper use of a familiar safety device, the seatbelt. You got to use them the way they're constructed. Putting half the seatbelt behind you, not using the harness belt and just using the lap belt isn't going to cut it and, and we can get terrible injuries that way. A person's body is at the mercy of inertia when a fast moving car crashes. With no harness belt, the body will hit the wheel or dashboard and suddenly stop while the organs keep moving at 60 miles per hour. What's happening is you're decelerating very quickly and your chest uh, stops, but your internal organs continue and then it tears the uh, anchor part of your aorta. You stop quickly, but your internal organs haven't quite kept up. The harness seat belt helps to keep the body and organs in sync and off the dashboard. We just recently had one where they, they didn't use the seat belt correctly and it didn't help them. Often, car accident victims are also simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. I never, ever stop my car on the side of a freeway. They stop their car on the freeway to discuss the accident. It's a fender bender. And then somebody comes along and rear ends the cars and somebody gets killed. Uh, I've had an officer get killed that way, at least two. I've had people who have just stopped uh, to fix a tire get killed that way. So I actually had a time where my engine light went on, and I can remember, you know, stop the car, stop the car. You shouldn't be driving with the engine light on. You know, I think it's my husband's little voice. And, and I just didn't feel comfortable stopping the car until on the side of the road until I could get an off-ramp because I was not, that engine light wasn't going to kill me at that point, but stopping my car on the side of the road, I wasn't so sure. Car accidents, violent crashes. Everybody at the scene is affected by it. Unexpected injuries. What do you think about this break? I needed to see his file, though. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I needed to look at that and I didn't look at it good. He was, I was given philosophy. Shedding new light on life. And it is very sad, but I have some questions to answer and I don't I have to get past the sad part pretty fast. I need to go change and start work.